A lot of, lot of talk in the industry about cloud gaming and what it means to gamers, what it means to marketers and consumers. Um, some of the other people that are in this space are choosing to go to directly to the consumer. Um, the Gaikai system is a little different, and I think from our standpoint as game marketers, it's a very interesting technology, a very interesting platform, something that we can take advantage, I think, going forward in the future. So please welcome uh, Mr. David Perry. This is a, a quote which was kind of the thinking at the time. This was in 2008 from the CEO of GameStop that, you know, you won't be able to do digital distribution of full products because, of course, the network can't do that. You know, the Internet, it's just not going to be capable. And, you know, ten minutes later, we have games on demand on our Xbox 360, which I think is funny because it says download and play full games on your Xbox 360. Um, with, with GameStop as a company, they can afford to buy anybody. And so what did they do when they decided, let's go buy somebody? The first thing they bought one year after that statement was an online digitally distributed game company. And a year later, they've, they've now bought Congregate. Again, given the choice to buy anyone, there's no, they could buy any developer, any technology company, anything to do with the, the, the um, game industry. And they're going online and um, focusing on, on companies that aren't even shipping anything at retail. So basically, we're in that kind of switch from physical to digital. Um, and I, I, the thing that makes me really happy, I've spent a bunch of time in Asia dealing with all of the Asian companies. And they, the great news here is that we have a really good future. We have a really safe future. You're in the right industry. You know, they have piracy that's just off the charts. And the music industry is destroyed because of that. And yet, the video game industry is absolutely booming over there. And the reason it's booming is because they changed to server-side authentication on their games, which is something you're now seeing the Western companies start to, to, um, to do. And so the fact that we know this industry can survive just the most rampant piracy possible is, is really um, a, an excellent thing. So digital is not something we need to fear. So the, um, as we all move towards <laughs> digital distribution, as I mean, everybody here at some point, if you're not already there, are going to be moving very aggressively into having a digital future. Um, that means that you're going to be driving more and more of your advertising online because it's something that you can, you can track and monitor and, and see exactly how your revenue is getting spent. And so with that in mind, um, the global internet advertising is, uh, is going to continue to grow. And you, you'll see across, if you were to combine search with display, the banner ads, and mobile, um, it's over a $100 billion um, industry. So searching and finding and, and discovering your digital products is something that, that all of you are going to need to be investing a lot of time and effort into. So um, what we at Gaikai have been doing is thinking about how do we, I think the main question I keep getting from publishers is, we as a publisher are very happy when someone um, gets a million units of sales, like a certain game is selling a million units, and then everyone's all drunk on the floor when they've hit 10 million, right? That's, a, like, that's the world we live in today. And the question is, how do we go from being really happy about 10 million to being really happy about 50 million or 100 million? How do we, you're not gonna go from 10 million to 50 with a subtle little change to your plan. You're gonna to have to do something very different. And when you look at the Zangas of this world, they get 80 million playing um, Farmville. The players are out there, but, but you're gonna to have to go about acquiring them a very, very different way. So one thing I've been looking at is, you just gotta remind yourself, how does, the, if you're thinking the big numbers of people and you're really dealing with the mass market and you're being honest with yourself, we're going after the mass market now. We're not, we're not just talking about it, we're really going for them. You gotta start thinking, how did those people really purchase? And when they, when they go buy a car, they don't just order it. They, they, they want to go and test drive it and take a look at it. When they've been trained now that because of the internet, that they should be able to preview an album um, before they, they commit to buying it. They don't just flip through CDs and buy them in the store. With movies, of course, they expect to see a trailer. It's a piece of the movie. It's experiencing a piece of the movie before you actually commit to, to um, either buying it or seeing it. Computers, I think... Um, uh, Apple has proved now that having stores that sell computers is, um, works or, or electronics like this. So you go in and you experience those electronics before you purchase them. Software. Before you commit to your $300, $500 package, people want to see if it'll even work on their computer. So they, they go through this process of, of doing a trial. 
You go to Costco, someone stuffs a piece of food in your hand. They, they, they want to... <laughs> They want to convert you right on the spot, you know? If that stuff tastes good, they're going to be able to get you to, to drop some in your basket. So experience is something that, without question, drives sales. It's the way, you know, billions of dollars of sales are done. Um, and this is, this is something that we, as the game industry, don't really quite get. We, we, we understand it, but we don't go out of our way to make it really easy. And the people that do, like Zanga, that, that make it really easy to experience their products, can pull a lot more people into their games. So if you look at the data, um, buying games online, do you need a demo? Um, because of this trend, especially free-to-play, which is going gonna, is gonna to continue this trend, is the more free-to-play games there are, the more people are going to get used to the idea that you've got to win me over before I start parting with my cash. And so I expect these numbers to keep increasing, meaning that there's an expectation to um, to try before you buy. And, and so in this case, you know, buying um, games online, do you need a demo? They're 35% say always now. Um, and 96% are going to check it out if you give them the chance. If you ask gamers where do they want their money spent, um, they don't say, hey, can I have some more billboard ads or can I have some cool magazine ads? They, they want game demos. It's the number one choice. And the number two choice is in-store game demos. So they're pretty clear on that. You know, it's amazing how many, when you start playing with the MMOs, I was this, the chief creative officer at Acclaim, I was tracking 400 MMOs at one point. It is stunning how many of them still require registration before I can do anything. I haven't seen anything, but I have to register. Then you've got the download. I had someone yesterday um, call me up. They, they, um, they have a 28 gigabyte game, um, which they're trying to get people to download. And it's like 28 gigabytes, you know, when they see the math, when they actually see how that compounds that top number, they're going to panic. And so then you've got your cost of the move times a number. The times the number is how much friction you've put in front of that user to get them to try the product. Again, when it goes digital, you're going to be feeding most of your um, gamers through one of these funnels. And you're going to try, to try to build up a business model where the cost of acquisition of the player is less than the lifetime value of the player. And that's just what, where you're going to live or die game after game. So the paradigm change that we're trying to say is let's stop moving people around. Let's not move people from somewhere on the internet and take them to another place that I want them to go. Let's take the game and bring the game to the gamers. Then we have no move needed. So if we don't move anyone, there's no cost of, of a move at the top of the funnel anymore. The bouncing is irrelevant because you're already there. You can't bounce off someone you're already there. Um, we certainly insist that you don't register. Um, we don't have any download install or anything like that. So basically what we've done is, is to the very moment someone is actually playing your product, we have now made that free. And, and that's part of what Gaikai is doing. So the, that whole idea of playing Google 50 cents a time, forget about it. We're getting to a point where games are starting to, um, like the genres are starting to really clearly become mature. So in the past, um, you know, if, if you played the first Echo the Dolphin, then that was the Dolphin game, right? But today, when you get Farmville come out, you've got 10 Farmville clones come out within three months of it. And that makes it harder for the consumers to, to work out what the heck's going on. What we want to do, uh, you know, as a, as a major change is make it so that one single click on any of these games, you can just try it out and see, is this one? No, that's, no, that's a bit lame, until you find the one you like. There's an elephant in the room here. Um, for Gaikai, because people keep saying to me, so how many games are you going to put on the service? The answer is really, really few, um, like really few. And the reason really few is because we want to go after 50, 100 million players. That's one reason. But the other reason is if someone gives you bad tasting food at Costco, you've just made your mind up that it's actually really bad. You, it, you know, it doesn't, I, you can't by trial sell stuff. You're better not to do trials if, you're, if the game isn't so great. So I can't take a 50% rated game and have you know, 100 million people try it and then you know, expect them to buy. They're not going to buy. I'll have helped them make their mind up definitely not to buy. And so that's the, the problem here. We're not actually looking for a sort of a, a big sort of massive library of games for people to play. I'm looking for the one game from each publisher that's probably, if one, if they have one that converts really well after a trial, those are the games we're actually looking for. And, um, and then our job is to get that game to go super, super wide. So Gaikai is basically a gaming cloud, and um, our goal is to make it so that professional, like really real professional, um, state-of-the-art games can play everywhere on the web.
the wall between video game marketers and consumers has crumbled.